Hi, everybody. We are here as we prepare for the third Sunday in Advent. Um, and for that, we have the 42nd chapter of uh, a reading from the 42nd chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah. And a little section in Isaiah chapters 40 through 55 called the Little Book of Comfort. So here is my sermon to whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice in the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says the Lord, Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I've called you in righteousness. I've taken you by the hand and kept you. I've given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness." I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and now new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of goodness and grace, we give you thanks as we... Um, head into more deeply into this season of Advent, this season of waiting, that you give to us a promise of new things, um, that we give thanks that you have not forgotten us, that you have not abandoned us, um, that you who gave breath to us um, are with us still and will bring us into the new life that you intend for all of your creation. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So what is there for you, Susie? Well, I think um, at staff meeting, I had I had pointed out that I thought that the, the will and the will not were interesting to me, that this is what the servant will do, and this is what the servant will not do. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like it's pretty hard hard on bringing things like justice, um, but it's very soft on things like not breaking a tender reed or not snuffing out a burning wick. And so that makes me think that God is saying that God's going to be strong where he needs to be and gentle where gentleness is required. So it just feels very, um, is it deft? Is that the word? Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I like a God that knows how to be gentle with me and kick me in the pants when I need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and one of the things that I really noticed this time that I did not when we um, went through it earlier today, um, starting with verse 5, um, the pains God takes, and I don't know how I would say this, but um, to credential God's self. Um, you know, I'm the one who created the heavens, stretched them out, spread out the earth, what comes from it, gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. You know, it's, it's this, you know, if you've forgotten who I am and what I do, um, let me remind you, um, which I, I think is, is really um interesting and in a way it reminds me of um you know every now and then and you probably do this too but every now and then my wife will in talking to our sons um will say now remember i'm the one who brought you into this world um and it was not a pleasant experience um but you would not be here apart from that um, and, and that's kind of the feeling that, um, you know, that I get from this is the reminder of, um, okay, now here's what I've done for you. You know, here's who I am. 
Um, and now I'm going to say a little bit more. Yeah, there's this creating and sustaining piece. Like I took you by the hand. I held on to you. I took care of you. This is what I'm about to do. Yep. Yep. And that business of now I've done all these things and then followed up with, I am the Lord. You know, um, I've called you unrighteousness, taken you by hand and kept you, given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations. And then he gets to the business that um, Jesus quotes from in his hometown of Nazareth in the synagogue when he announces why it is that he has come and who he is. Um, you know, he reminds him he's come um, to open the eyes that are blind, bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. Um, and and I, I should mention that um, a couple of days ago, and I'm having a conversation with this friend, actually tomorrow afternoon, he's requested, um, you know, that we get together and sit down. And he posted on Facebook um, that that someone had said that um, liberation theology pretends to be another gospel. Um, mm. And I said, how is that? You know, how is it that um, the God that the Jews know as the God of the Exodus, um, the God that Christians know as the Jesus who announced his ministry through these words from Isaiah 42, how is that a different gospel? Um, you know, how is God not a God of deliverance, um, a God of liberation? Um, and and it's clear here. The springing the prisoners from the dungeon. Yeah. Establishing yeah. justice on the earth and not growing faint. That, yep. that, the growing faint part stands out to me too, because I think hmm, to bring justice to the earth sounds really exhausting. Like even just bringing justice into my own household <laughs> tires yeah. me out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and let me set the context for um, for those of you who are listening. I mentioned this little book of comfort. Um, Isaiah is divided into to three sections. Um, there's one through 39, there's 40 through 55, and there's 55 through um, 65, 66. Um, and this middle portion is spoken to the people as they are returning or as they have returned from their exile into Babylon. So again, God is defining God's self as a God of deliverance, you know, as a God of liberation. You know, I have delivered you from um, the Babylonians. I have liberated you from captivity. Um, and, and I wonder why we always or often tend to spiritualize that. Spiritualize what part? Say that for me a little, maybe another way. The idea of God being a God of, of deliverance, a God of salvation, a God of liberation. Um, why we say, well, it's a spiritual liberation. You know, it's a spiritual deliverance. It is that, I think, yes. But it's also, you know, God physically taking us from this place, which is not our home, and putting us in this place, which is our home. Um, you know, it's it's a physical deliverance within the context of history. Yeah, I would agree that there are multiple instances in the Bible that talk about a physical deliverance and not just the spiritual aspect of it. And I don't know why it can't be both mm -hmm. you know, why does it have to be one or the other i think it's an interesting conversation that you're going to have with your friend um because i think i've noticed a big shift in the whole idea of liberation theology just in the short time that i've been at seminary and um and i'm thinking today about is it india where their government has just voted to um, criminalize sex outside of marriage Ooh, and Indonesia. Um, Indonesia, yeah. Um, and and uh, 
And so like they had kind of some moral things that they were going to be enforcing and it not only um, applies to its residents, but also to its uh, visitors, tourists. Um, and and it, it sounds like it's a, um, a human rights kind of situation, right? And so there have been people protesting there in the past. Um, and it's that weird spot where we wonder about what part of this is our role to speak as believers and what part of this is our role to speak in general from just a, a humanity standpoint. Yeah. And so then I wonder too, like about how liberation theology and um, rising up in protest of things uh, crosses over. Where does it become something that is uh, something that we're called to do? And where does it become something that it, I don't want to say that it's trendy, but in some ways, some of the social justice stuff is kind of trendy right now. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is trendy, and sometimes the trap that we fall into is to say, well, um, because it's trendy, it can't be gospel. Mm. Um, you know, people glom on to things, but just because people glom on to things doesn't mean they're problematic or false. Um, and I, I, I think we sometimes get stuck in that trap. Um, you know, we define something um, according to whether it's fashionable or trendy. And if it's fashionable or trendy, it's it's got to be wrong um, or or false or um, you know something of that sort. But yeah, no, I I definitely hear what you're saying. So then, if we think about this part of scripture, Isaiah is writing about a servant. Later in the New Testament, God invites us to be followers, and being a follower invites action and participation. Is Isaiah saying this kind of liberation is going to happen through one party, or is this a participatory kind of thing for all the people to be a part of again that you'd use that interesting little word or um, um and and i think we often create those binary choices um rather than inclusive possibilities um because yes it's quite possible god is saying both um and, you know, we, we want to say, well, I, you know, it's A or B, you know, well, why can't it be A through Z, you know? Um, I, I, I think God is less, um, it sounds like an odd thing, but God is less either or than we are. <laughs> especially the God who spread out the earth and what comes from it. Um, I mean, you know, created the heavens and stretched them out, who, you know, the totality of all that is, and we want to narrow God down to one letter of 26 in the alphabet. I hear a voice of, of an individual coming that is giving hope. And then from that individual God is, it sounds like God is blessing other people and giving them God's spirit to walk within it. And so I, I think I hear both happening, but one being kind of a conduit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We know though, and, and God and Jesus made the choice to partner with humanity um, to address the ills in the world. Um, and I mean, you know, from the, the big fixes that God tried initially from, you know, confusing languages at the Tower of Babel to um, drowning everyone, God just started to restart small with Sarah and Abraham and work through individual human beings. Um, 
Jesus decided to call um, 12 fishermen, tax collectors, um, et cetera, um, and, and start in that way. Um, so, yeah, even though we're talking about one God and, and one Christ, we're also talking about that one God and that one Christ choosing to work through people. Um, well, I met with the JAM students this past week. We were talking about the prophet Jeremiah. Mm. And one of the one of the elementary students said, hmm, why does God need any of us if God why doesn't God just do it all God's self? And I thought, you know, what an interesting question. And also what an interesting mind to think of it from that perspective. Because of course God could do all of that. So I asked back, why do you think God would ask you to participate or invite you to be involved? And they were like, oh. I think actually, I think the why question is unanswerable. Um, but the answer to the question is clear. I mean, why did God do that? We don't know. We know God did that. Um, we know God made the choice to partner with us. Um, and, and I, you know, we're in Advent, so I love the story of Mary, you know, where Gabriel goes to Mary and, and you know, just says, how about it? And Mary's response is, all right, let it be with me according to your word. Um, and, and how I read that is that Mary is like 14th or 15, you know, girl in Israel that Gabriel has gone to and the others have said, not on your life. And Mary says, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll partner with you, you know, to um, bring the Messiah into the world. Um, and, and so I think we're always being given that invitation and it's up to us to say, let it be with me according to your word. Um, yeah, now, I, I think that's a good place to, to stop. Um, I hope everybody's having, uh, uh, I hope y'all are having a great advent. Um, I hope you're staying warm. Um, and um, we'll we'll see you in church. <laughs> My cat. <laughs> Take care, everyone. <laughs>